today on Ask This Old House. A stock screen door won't fit this opening. I'll show you how to build a custom one that will fit. So now, when we put it in the hole, it's easier to line up one, then the other, and then the other. Slide it down. Okay. I'll walk you through the care and feeding of your washing machine. So people don't realize that there are leveling legs right here. And it works way better than a shingle or a piece of carpet. And I'll show you the correct way to paint wood trim that has been varnished. We'll get a good adhesion to it, and it's going to get it a great coverage. Hey, Ross. Hey, Kev. Oh, it's a little early for mood lighting, isn't it? <laughs> I'm getting a lot of questions about smart lighting. What I typically recommend for most people is upgrading their existing switches to a smart switch like mm -hmm. this. What's great about that, it gives you on, off, local control, dimming capability. It works with your app or smart speaker to control it for a schedule, for example. Uh, but, and it also works with just about any light bulb that's on the market. So once you put the switch in, all the bulbs pretty much work. Yep, but you do need to get an electrician involved because you're inv getting involved with the power wiring. Right, which is why if people don't want to get into the wiring, they reach for a smart light bulb. Right, it's super DIY friendly and has Wi-Fi built in. So it works with your phone, it works with your smart speakers, gives you all the functions we talked about earlier. The downside, of course, is that they need a constant source of power to work. So if someone comes along and kills your light switch, huh. you've killed power to the smart light bulb, it's not going to work. You're upstairs with the app and nothing's going to work. Gonna, your schedules aren't going to work, nothing's going to work. Yep. All right. So one solution is really a hybrid approach. It's a two-part piece here. It has a back plate that mounts onto an existing light switch. And what's great about that is it leaves the light switch in the on position. Oh, so yeah. you can't turn it off. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. And then you install this wireless remote that clicks on which is great because look, I have local control on off. Walk into the room. I get, get dimming control. capability. Oh, yeah. And because the light switch is on all the time, I still have access to my phone. Very nice. I like that. Just keep in mind when you install this, the light switch is always on, even if the light is off. So power is flowing to that light socket even in this situation. Uh, okay. Well, right. still cool information and good to know about. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, Laura. Hi, Tommy. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. So I take it this is the door you wrote me about? This is it. Yep. It's a big one. Yes, it was built in 1890. Yeah. Uh, and it's huge. Uh, we tried finding a, a screen door to fit, and uh, they don't make them this size. Yeah, you're not going to get one off the shelf, that's for sure. Right, exactly. So we've looked into ordering one custom, and uh, it seemed like it was going to be too expensive. And so then I thought I'd make one myself. Oh, yeah? Because uh, I love doing woodwork. Oh, you um, do? Yeah, I've done a fair share of projects around our house. Oh, that's great. But I don't know how to do joinery, so that's All something. Right. That's why I wrote to you. Well, if you've done some projects, you can build a door and I can help you. We'll take some measurements and we can get started. Great, thanks. All right, Laura, here's the material that we're going to use for your door. This is actually called straight grain fir. The grain's nice and tight, and you can see that it's really straight. And the good thing about this is it's strong, and the door will stay true to itself over time, which is always nice. Good. And we ordered S4S, sanded all four sides. Okay. So dimensionally, the width is right, but we have to cut our lengths. Now, in building a door, I made a little mock-up out of some scrap plywood that I have that you can see here. Our styles and our rails, and our rails go are cut in between, and they're actually held together with mortise and tenon joints. Mm, All right, nice. so there's a mortise in here and a tenon that gives us a lot more glue surface, and that actually lessens the chance of this door twisting over time. Now, I've added one thing here. I've actually added a half lap joint right here. You can see that's going to sit on this shelf. That's called a rabbit. When you put them together like that, this right here gives us a lot more glue surface than if it was just butted together. Oh, so the cool. door will yeah. really stay together. Mm -hmm. And we also create a shelf right here to mount the screen onto. Cool. All right, now we're ready to start cutting the lengths for our uh, rails that are going to go between the two styles. So the first thing I want to do is measure the overall width of the door, which will be 42. I'm going to make it a little bit stronger. I'm going to make it 42 and an eighth. Now, I can't just cut these pieces 30 and an eighth in between here because I have to allow for the half lap that's going to sit on top of that rabbit. This rabbit joint here is going to sit on a rabbit over here, so that would be an inch on each side. All right, we've already squared up one end, so now all you have to do is put them on the saw, keep them tight to the fence, and cut the length. 
We've set our stop right here so all of our pieces will be exactly the same size. Pull the trigger, push down, go right through it. There you go. All right, there's one, three more to go. Now you can watch this old house and ask this old house anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovation, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. I could have cut all my rabbits using a router with a router table, but I'm using a table saw because I want to save the cutoff. There are three different cuts and three different settings that I have to make with my table saw for the blade height and the grip bench width. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up and make all of my cuts on all of the pieces for the first cut, change my settings, make all of my cuts for the second cut, change my settings, and make all of my cuts for the third cut. That saves a lot of time. All right, our door's all laid out. We've marked for all of our mortises on all of our pieces, and we're ready to mortise. So you're gonna take the machine, you're gonna put it on top, and you're gonna push down hard. All the way in until it stops. Okay, now slowly take it out. Now move it over to the next spot. Yeah, just be careful you're not picking up this way. So on the inside of this rabbit, we're gonna glue up all of this surface and put some glue in the hole. Nice. All right, now dump some down each hole. And now I wanna get my tenants in the glue in the hole. So we'll drive them down. I'll put one all the way down, one a little and one up like that. So now, when we put it in the hole, it's easier to line up one, then the other, and then the other. Slide it down. Okay, now we're ready for the next one. Go ahead. And now we just push it down. Okay, let's get another one. Just try to get the top ones and then we'll slide it down as we make sure that they're in the right holes. And gently go down, make sure we get them all started. All right, let's get this clamp on here, spin that one around a little bit. Got it? Now we clamp this up. With the styles and rails glued together, we can cut off the excess with a track saw. All right, our door is almost built. We have a couple of little things to put in. You, you ordered these brackets? I did. I picked these up. I thought they would look nice on a Victorian door. It'll really dress it up. All right, so what we'll do is we'll screw these in. That way, if you ever have to remove them when you paint the door, it'll be a lot easier to paint the backside. If we drill that hole. Very good. Perfect. All right, so we've got our brackets on and now we're ready to install the screen. Now we can staple the screen at the top and then you could pull some tension on it and then I could staple it. But what I like to do is put a little bit of tension on the door, bowing it slightly 
So when you put tension on it and I staple it, that'll put more tension on the screen when I release the tension on the door. Oh, okay. All right, so we pick it up and just put a little filler under here. We'll go halfway down the door and clamp the door, bringing it down, bowing it down slightly. All right, we don't need a lot, so just bring it right down, nice and tight. Now we'll take our screening wire. I'm gonna pull it just a little bit from you. I'm gonna put a staple in it here. And now pull it just a little. Now we're gonna unroll the screen all the way to the end of the door. And I want you to grab it now and just grab a little tension. Put your hands a little bit closer together. Yeah. Okay. So I wanna try to straighten this out or flatten it out. So put some tension in the middle. That looks good. You got it there? Yep. Very nice. Great. All right, now we'll just cut away the excess. Nice, very nice. All right, so now for the bottom two sections, we, we don't need to bow the door. We can actually put just put tension on it. So now I want you to pull a little tension on it, like right in the middle there. Okay, just hold it there. I'm gonna, not too tight now. A little bit more. Make sure it's flat, yep. And this one, just a little. Perfect. Our screen wire is in. Now remember those cutoffs that we took out of the rabbit and we saved them? Yes. We mitered the ends and they fit right in there and they hide all of the staples. That's perfect. Down there. All right, Laura, here's your door. Now I oversized the door a little bit, both width and height because it's an old house and you don't know if it's settled just a little bit and if the, if the opening is racked at all. So what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna take and put it up and I'm gonna put it tight to the opening on this side and then I can fit it. When I fit it, I'm gonna mark a little bit to take, cut some off of that side or maybe a little bit off of this side. Once it's fit that way, then I put it back into the opening and cut it off the bottom and the top so it fits to that if there's any angle. All right, what do you think? I love it. All right, let's make it fit. And we tip the saw about three or four degrees, so when you rip the door down, it'll be beveled, and that inside edge won't hit the casing as it closes. Now we're ready for the hardware. And old screen doors had pretty simple hardware. So you want to use a knob like this that you've saved from an old door, which is really going to be nice, but we're not going to use a latch. And the hinges on the doors were usually surface mounted, and they were pretty lightweight because the doors were pretty lightweight. But this is a big door, it's heavy, so I want to use some more surface mounted hardware, but I want to use a heavy duty one. We're going to install the compressor. The compressor is going to allow the door to close slowly, but it's also going to hold the door shut because we don't have a latch. All right, Laura, there's your new screen door. What do you think? Wow, I love it. It's exactly what we wanted. Well, that's good. And that soft close, closing the door, hopefully your kids won't pinch their fingers. Great. I love just knowing what's inside of it. It helps me appreciate all the hard work that goes into it. Well, all those little things inside there is what's going to hold this door together, and it will last a long time. Great. Thank you so much, Tommy. My pleasure, and thanks for all your help. Thanks. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. 
Watch it all in the This Old House app. And join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. Hey, Richard. Hey, Kev. Talking washing machines today? Yeah, I thought we'd talk about the care and feeding of washing machines. You know, many people have them and they're great devices, but there's some things to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. The first one is probably to make sure they are level. You know, you walk into a house and you hear, sounds like some rumble going on upstairs. It's because the washing machine is not level. It's got a cylinder and it's going to spin this way or this way for front loaders. So people don't realize that there are leveling legs right here. And yep. You take a pair of pliers and you would put a level right here on the front and lift it up and put it down. It works way better than a shingle right. or a piece of carbon. The newer models are spinning very fast. Absolutely. These things can literally walk out that, of the space. That's right. So the other thing is to think about the water supply to this. You know, at the back of the washing machine, there are connections for hoses and there's a filters inside here, inside that you've got to be careful of. If, say, a washer broke off on a shutoff downstream, it could come up and clog the backside here, right. and then you wouldn't have hot or cold. Okay. Now these hoses, this is what most people have. They're rubber hoses. These happen to be red and blue, but many times they're black. These are simple rubber hoses, but they sit under full pressure all the time. Doesn't matter if this is on or not. Correct. Pressure to the hoses. Right. right. So this is what it looks like if like in a cutaway. You can see it's got a pretty thick sidewall, but what you worry about is that rubber getting tired over time and, and wearing out and causing actually allowing an aneurysm or a bubble, a split on this side. So what I always recommend strongly is this stainless steel braided hose. It still has a high level of rubber inside, it's got reinforcement, and then it has a stainless steel casing or sheathing on the outside. It would reduce the chance of a, of a burst. So this is always my recommended. Cheap upgrade. Absolutely. Yeah, they really don't cost much right. more. But it's not just the hoses. These things sit under full pressure. So it's connected to some sort of shutoff device. So many times you just see a pair of these down here with the washer machine hoses connected. Nobody ever turns them on or off, and, but they should. An innovation that was pretty terrific was this. this. This was a breakthrough. You put the washing machine hoses onto here, and then when you're doing a wash, you turn it on, and then it pressurizes it then. When you were done with the wash, you turn it off, and it would depressurize the hoses so you could go away and not worry about these hoses. But guess what? <laughs> no one ever did No one it. ever did. The only time they did it was the morning after the yeah, burst, yeah, yeah, okay? No. Now, another option came out, which was an electronic device, and connect the hoses here, plug this in, and then the washer machine plugged into right here, it would feel the amp drawer of that washer coming on, then and only then would the hoses be pressurized, and that worked terrific, it does work terrific. The machine's not running, it closes these valves, right. only opens them when the machine's running. That's right, it has a little leak sensor you can put on the floor as an added feature too, so that's pretty good. So if it ever senses water, again, valves shut, yep. you're protected. Absolutely. Love it. So this was great, and, uh, and then this is electronic, and that's beautiful, this is beautiful and simple. This has a spring-loaded lever that says, I want to do my wash. I come over here and I pull it to the side, and it leaves the water pressure to the hoses for two and a half hours. Mm. So when you're done, you don't have to wait for it to come down, you know, the wash to be done. You know it'll be off safe. No electronics to fail on you, and unlike this one, it defaults to the off position. Correct, correct. So you have to do something. It defaults just safe. So I like gotcha. this a lot. That's great. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Richard. Good info. Hi, Pam. Hey, Mauro. Thanks for coming. No problem. Thanks for having me here. So we lived in this house for four years. It's built in the 1960s, and we've been doing a ton of projects, a lot of painting, and there's one particular room that I think I could really use your help. All right. Let's take a look at it. All right. Let's go. All right, Mauro. So this is our office. Nice. I notice you have a lot of trim with some probably varnish on it. That's very common in a 1960s house. And then I also notice a door that's been painted white. Right, so we did try to paint um, the door as well as the trim. Um, we started with just like a basic uh, wall primer, oh, latex, wait, primer. Yep. Okay. and then um, two coats of paint. And as you can see, it just, it didn't cover quite as well as we oh, had hoped. That? some chipping here and here. So before we tackled the rest of the room, we just wanted to make sure we were gonna do it the right way and we had the right technique. Got it. Uh, we can do better than that, yes. Um, and I'll show you a couple great techniques. Let's start by taking the closet doors off the tracks. Okay, Pam, I know you already have this drop clock, but um, I wanna uh, put this to protect the floor. This is my first pro tip for you, okay. all right? Well, you're gonna use this masking tape to protect the floors. 
Uh, I don't want to use a drop cloth too close to the baseboard because it's thick and this tape is very thin. We'll protect the floor and we'll give us a nice cutting line. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, we're going to overlap this corner just like that. All right. Okay. We're good. All right, Pam, it's time for us to do some sanding. This is a 220 grit sand paper that we're using. We actually didn't do any sanding in this room before, so that was probably one of the mistakes we made. And so this is one of the very important step before you do anything to it. Okay. Uh, we're just gonna lightly sand to take off any imperfections that we see, and also to break the sheen a little bit in order for the primer to get a good adhesion to it. It's always good to use a respirator when you're sanding because we're going to create a little bit of dust and you should be protected. Okay, now that sanding is all done, we're going to hit every surface with the help of vac. And after that, you want it to come right behind me with a tack cloth because we don't want to paint any surface with any dust left over. In general, for a, a regular painting project, a water base or latex primer will be just fine. Uh, but when we get to the finish like this, I like to use a bonding primer. We'll get a good adhesion to it, and it was going to get it as great coverage also. So we're going to start by cutting the edges. I'm going to give it this three inches angle cut brush. Usually, I would protect the walls, but since you're going to be painting the walls, we don't need to do that. There we go. Look good, Pam. Start from the top and come with a long stroke. I'm going to start by cutting around the ceiling. Once the prime is dry, I can fill all the nail holes with some wood filler. While the wood fill is dry, we can wipe off the excess with a wet rag. We're ready for the first coat, and the color you chose is extra white, yes. semi-gloss finish. Yep, that's what we have in the rest of the house. Well, Pam, paint is dry. What do you think? It looks fantastic in here. It's so much brighter. Okay, I know you're gonna paint the walls. Uh, when are you planning painting the walls? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. We're gonna leave the drop cloths here for you. Great. And uh, what color are you thinking doing the walls? Uh, sea salt, which is a green gray. Oh, that's nice. That's gonna give us a beautiful contrast with the extra white trim that we've done today. Perfect. And, uh, but before you paint, um, there's some preparation that needs to be done. Make sure you filled in all the nail holes uh, and then you get like a 220 grit sandpaper, lightly sand, clean the walls, and you're gonna be ready to rock and roll. Sounds and good. And one thing, send me a picture when this is all done. Oh, I definitely will. Thank you for all your help. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.